On November the 11th, 1989, the legend came to life. USS Abraham Lincoln started writing her history by accepting over 5,500 crew members. The mammoth ship, displacing around 95,000 tons, is nearly 1,100 feet long. And while you may think this behemoth is hard to move around, it has a top speed of over 35 knots, making it one of the fastest ships in the Navy. Abraham Lincoln doesn't slice through the water at speeds this fast by conventional means. It uses two nuclear reactors to turn the 21-foot tall propellers, each weighing over 11 tons. The hardware is striking. But what is truly impressive about Abraham Lincoln is her crew. The Abraham Lincoln Carrier Air Wing 11 team add up to almost 6,000 motivated sailors and marines, all living with an airport right above their heads. The four and a half acre flight deck has been labeled the most dangerous place in the world, and with good reason. With one wrong step, you could find yourself looking at the Navy's most sophisticated aircraft hurling themselves at you at over 150 miles an hour. Getting a 37 ton aircraft to go that fast in 250 feet is no problem for Lincoln's four catapults. They do it in less than three seconds and can launch four aircraft in one minute. Getting back on the ship is as impressive as leaving. A pilot uses a series of lights known as the ball to guide his aircraft down the slope. But he doesn't have the convenience of a lengthy runway. He has to grab one of the four two-inch thick cables which drag aircraft going as fast as 150 miles an hour to a screeching halt. As soon as the pilot hits the deck, he pushes the aircraft's engines to the max. This is to ensure he has enough power to take off again if he misses all four cables, known as a bolter. The flight deck crew is color-coded for different jobs they do. Yellow is for the flight deck officers and aircraft directors. They call the shots when the aircraft is on the deck and pilots must obey their signals. Brown shirts are plane captains. They ensure the plane is ready for flight before they take to the air. The purple shirts, or grapes, man the aircraft's fuel pumps. They make sure clean jet fuel gets into the planes. Green shirts are the mechanics that work on the planes, maintain the arresting gear systems, and work on the powerful catapults. The gentlemen wearing blue chalk and chain the aircraft to the deck, making sure they don't move while it's parked. The men in red are weapons handlers and the crash and salvage crew. The average age of the sailors participating in what looks like a postmodern ballet is 19. The Lincoln carries over seven different types of aircraft during her at sea periods. The Indians of Helicopter Anti Submarine Squadron 6, better known as HS 6, fly the Sikorsky SH-60F and the HH-60H Seahawk helicopters. The Seahawk is a gas turbine powered helicopter used for anti-submarine warfare, rescue and assistance missions, and transfer of cargo and personnel from one ship to another. The Dragon Fires of Air Anti-Submarine Squadron 29 or VS-29 Fly the Lockheed S-3B Viking. This aircraft provides long-range anti-submarine defense for the carrier battle group. The Wallbangers of Carrier Airborne Early Warning Squadron 117 or VAW-117 fly the Grumman E-2C plus Hawkeye. This is an all-weather early warning defense aircraft with a distinct rotation radar dome. The Black Ravens of Tactical Electronic Warfare Squadron 135, or VAQ-135, pilot the Grumman EA-6B Prowler aircraft. This four-seat all-weather jet was specifically designed for use in tactical electronic warfare. The Green Lizards of Attack Squadron 95 take to the air with the Grumman A-6E Intruder. 
The A6E is a carrier-borne, low-level attack bomber specifically designed to deliver a variety of ordnance on targets totally obscured by inclement weather or darkness. Three different squadrons fly the McDonnell Douglas F-A-18 Hornet. The mighty shrikes of Strike Fighter Squadron 94, the Black Knights of Marine Strike Fighter Squadron 314, and the Fighting Redcocks of Strike Fighter Squadron 22 all fly the versatile twin-engine light attack strike fighter bomber. The Grumman F-14, a Tomcat of Top Gun fame, is the Navy's mainstay fighter interceptor. The Black Lions of Fighter Squadron 213 fly the supersonic aircraft. While the activity on the flight deck is going on, there is a beehive of activity below decks. The Lincoln has most everything a town with a comparable population has, including a post office with its own zip code, TV and radio stations, a daily newspaper, a fire department, a library, a hospital, two general stores, two barber shops, and much more. This ship also generates enough electricity for a city of 100,000. It can carry enough food for supplies to stay at sea for 90 days. And the air conditioning plants have a capacity of 2,520 tons, enough to serve more than 800 homes. Abraham Lincoln also has the capability of distilling over 400,000 gallons of fresh water from seawater every day. USS Abraham Lincoln is America's fifth Nimitz-class aircraft carrier and is the world's largest warship. The ship is the second ship of the line to bear the name of America's 16th president. Lincoln's keel was laid on November 3, 1984 at Newport News, Virginia. The ship was commissioned on November the 11th, 1989 after completing shakedown and acceptance trials. Abraham Lincoln departed Norfolk on September 1990 to complete an interfleet transfer from the Atlantic to the Pacific Fleet and eventually arrival in her new home port of Alameda, California. In January 1991, the ship began accelerated workups for its first deployment in response to Operation Desert Shield, Desert Storm. On May 28, 1991, Abraham Lincoln set sail for this maiden Western Pacific deployment, nearly four months ahead of its original deployment date. While en route to the Indian Ocean, Abraham Lincoln was diverted to support evacuation operations in the Philippines. The operation titled Operation Fiery Vigil would become the largest peacetime evacuation of active duty military and family members in history. With Fiery Vigil complete, Abraham Lincoln took up station in the Arabian Gulf in support of Allied and U.S. troops remaining in the region for Operation Desert Storm. Abraham Lincoln's air wing provided nearly continuous combat air patrol reconnaissance and support air operations over Kuwait and Iraq. After spending much of early 1992 in a selected restricted availability at Naval Air Station Alameda, the ship set out in the latter part of the year on workups for a second Westpac. The Lincoln set sail on June 15, 1993. The USS Abraham Lincoln departed on a six-month Western Pacific deployment today. Oh, dude, that's good. The nearly 6,000-member crew shared a teary goodbye with their loved ones. This will be the Lincoln's second deployment in her four years since commissioning in 1989.
The Lincoln carries her crew into perilous waters, into the war-plagued Middle East and the Persian Gulf. Lincoln is scheduled to return in December, just in time for Christmas.
these guys are basically the Beverly Hillbillies of the Middle East, huh? Well, the first thing you know, Ahmed's a millionaire. <laughs> Kid folks say, ah, move away from there. Yeah, I was thinking about dating. You know, it's true. A lot of times a guy get a lady home on a date, first date, and she'll say something like, come on, can't we just be friends? I used to say, well, I have a little friend I'd like you to meet. The aircraft, so many different jobs. Man, I asked one guy what he did, and he said, What was it? Uh, what was it? Special service. I said, What do you do for a job? He said, Well, I can tell you, but if I do, I'd have to kill you. And I said, Well, why don't you give me a hint and beat the shit out of me? How about that? <laughs> that work? Had a good time. We went to Kuwait. No women, no alcohol. Whole lot of praying. Everybody think they're praying for something. They're praying for women and alcohol. That's what they're praying for.
of sweat, sweat stains in the carpet. My shirt's yeah. growing yellow. That's work.
Overseas for six months, the USS Abraham Lincoln returned to its home port of Alameda today. And I think to myself, what a wonderful the Lincoln and her crew visited the ports of Hong Kong, the United Arab Emirates, Australia, and Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. What a wonderful world. Lincoln and her crew participated with other U.S. forces over Iraq in Operation Southern Watch. They also lent a hand to United Nations forces in Somalia. Family and friends gathered on the pier to welcome the homesick sailors back to familiar ground. With open arms and teary eyes, the sailors and their families returned home together. Some to people they never met, but loved more than anything. <laughs> 